June is uh, True Security Day 2025 here in Singapore. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Alexander Ivanyuk, who is from Acronis. And he will be sharing with us on the latest uh, cyber threat developments and trends here in the region as well as globally. So thank you so much uh, for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Jane. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you. All right. Okay. So Alex, you know, the 2024 Acronis uh, Cyber Threat Report, one of the uh, statistics uh, that came out from there was that there has been a 50% rise in malware detections uh, compared to 2022, and there's close to 300,000 new malware uh, samples uh, that have been detected at every single day. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true. That's true. The important here is to understand that number of malware samples grow for all the recent years, right? And if we talk about the difference of two years, there definitely will be a big increase. Mm, mm. Uh, of course, uh, cyber criminals continue to just create more malware. This is the trend, as I say, that we actually observe for a lot of years. Like I started my job in security company, first one, 15 years ago. Even that time, we already saw that. But then it's actually exploded exponentially. And there are a number of reasons for it, right? The internet started to be more accessible. Now everyone is connected. And there are some technologies available for bad guys, which are also simplified the malware creation. So if we talk about the recent couple of years, or specifically maybe last year, all this raising in generative AI, people with bad intent can create a malware. Yeah, AI is, uh, of, of course, a big theme for every uh, cyber uh, threat defender nowadays because it's a double-edged sword, right? Um, exactly. Threat actors use it for their uh, malicious purposes, but cyber defenders, we can also use it for uh, strengthening our cyber defense uh, posture as well. So before we come to AI, right, there's two other, um, I would say, uh, themes that people would find quite interesting as well, which you also highlighted at your presentation. One is ransomware has not uh, shown any decline, it, it continues to persist. And the other one is um, job uh, recruitment scams. So I think the job recruitment scams will be of great uh, interest to uh, a lot of uh, the audience out there, especially those in the uh, IT industry or cyber <laughs> security industry, right? So in your blogs and as well as your threat report, you highlighted this uh, scam called, is it um, interview? No, contagious interview campaign, right? And this has been going on for two years. And you also highlighted how uh, some of the threat actors are using LinkedIn. Tell us about some of these uh, campaigns. What are they after? Is it the cryptocurrency? What are their motivations? And how different or similar are some of these uh, job recruitment scams? All right. So let, let first of all start from there thing itself, the job recruitment scam, which is actually uh, a very good example how innovative these bad guys are, right? They find the ways how to get into the person uh, in a new way, yet convincing and very efficient for them, right? So what will appear to developer, right? Something like new job, a new project to work on and things like this. Uh, so what we're actually doing here, yeah, they searching for people invite them to the interview in the development company, security company, something technological, right? Which can involve some kind of apps or code to be created or reviewed or things like this. And this is a social engineering kind of thing. It's just about deceiving people into something. So next step is like how you actually trick them into doing something, right? And this is moving into the second part of your question, what are they after? This is depends who is attacker and what uh, the goal they have in mind. Typically, yes, as we mentioned in our report, this is probably a nation state sponsored or something. And in this case, these people are after some know-how, probably some code, but if we generalize it as a data, right? Confidential data. So by performing this job scam, they trick the person to install some kind of malware, some, some kind of software which later download the actual payload and backdoor. And this piece of software, malicious software, will be stealing the data it and stay hidden in the system, right? That's why some of this can continue for like years unnoticed. If this is a state sponsor, very hard to detect. So the 
if I understand you correctly, most of the uh, target victims are developers or IT professionals. They are after their confidential data. So I guess uh, as a way to get into their organization to steal data. Is yeah, exactly, what? exactly. Right. But, but mm. as I said, that can be a variety of cases, right? Mm. It also can be done in a way, for example, people being profiled for uh, crypto or being involved in the crypto industry, right? Uh, I believe you know and the people who are watching your channel, right, uh, well aware that bad guys using that for ransoms. That is why, for example, bad guys also can be profiling people who are involved in the crypto industry or known being like crypto investor, crypto guru, something like this, right? Okay. So we will tell you, yeah, there is this new crypto project, right? New startup, which is very potential, very interesting, right? Do you want to join? Do you want to contribute? But uh, I'm just thinking, you know, uh, we would, uh, as um, people in the IT industry, we sort of think, right, we surely would not fall for these kind of scams, right? Or tricks, right? <laughs> so, so, so what's happening there? How, how, why, why would we fall for it? Well, like I would say, it's a human nature, right? Sometimes people want something, or in the situation, they just kind of losing their mind, <laughs> right, for, okay. forgot, forgot about basic security measures. Mm. You still should have some alarm sign. It's like, for example, with uh, spam emails or some malicious emails, right? Out of sudden, you get some emails. First thing, I always recommend people to think about, like, are you expecting this one, right? Because if you're not, this is already something to think about. Why I suddenly have it, right? But for example, yeah, if we talk about an active search of a job, and suddenly he got some invitation to an interview. Bad guys were profiling people mm -hmm. and they're searching for people through social media. Check your Facebook, your LinkedIn, these kind of things, Twitter, see what you're interested in if you're a big holder of cryptocurrency or stuff like this. Right, we, right. We will profile you and then it's easier to approach. But then again, when people ask you to do something on this interview, like uh, for these examples of um, uh, job scams mm -hmm. who involve developers, we actually ask them to install a malicious package, right? And that should be somewhat alarming, right? All right, why I need to install this package, right? What is this package? I may need some time to check it in terms of security before rushing into installing it mm -hmm. without any thinking, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, um, so uh, the tri actors are very, uh, well, very sophisticated. They profile especially uh, certain individuals to go after. And yeah, they're, they're, they're also unfortunately creative guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So I think a lot of these tactics are also quite similar in the ransomware uh, attack as well. Um, your report also highlighted uh, quite a few new ransomware groups. Uh, one is called Ransom Hub. I believe that is uh, fairly new in the sense that um, the old ones like Maze, right, were all taken yeah, down. Yeah, Rebel Maze. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, the, the thing here is also that. Uh, the ransomware gangs, what we like to do often is uh, after scoring a big hit, getting a lot of money, what we like to do is kind of rebrand. And what we're doing, we just change the name and say, oh no, we closed this gang, we're no more, that's enough. But actually that's mostly the same guys who organize a new one. This is one point. Another point is that uh, we were few cases of source code leakage of ransomware, which you may be familiar with, like for example, Logbit code I think was leaked. Uh, mm -hmm. some, some, some time ago. And that was picked up by other bad guys who just started to use this code and then just name their group in a different way. Mm -hmm. So this is happening, what I want to say, kind of all the time. The new groups appear, they quite often still include, let's call them veterans of the industry who was doing the same uh, mm -hmm. illegal business before. So talking about the same illegal business, right? Um, some of the common... Uh, tactics that you also highlighted in your presentation is uh, exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities or phishing, good old-fashioned social engineering, right? Right, right. But how, how have you seen their techniques evolve to become more and more difficult to, you know, to, to detect? The recent case we all have in our report is from December last year when a club my ransomware gang, they just happened to find or probably they bought this uh, vulnerability which wasn't patch, it was actually critical vulnerability. And the companies were lacking behind to patch it. And again, patch is not available immediately, right? And thanks to that vulnerability, we actually don't need to invent anything, right? We just need somehow do initial step, initial attack, 
and this can be through email and we know that yeah unfortunately it's still working very well but because vulnerability was used the code execute malicious code execute automatically and system is infected and you cannot do much about it if you're not prepared for example in terms of uh, proper security product mm -hmm. and for example in uh, our security product we have uh, uh, technology so-called exploit prevention that, and this technology helps you to detect some usage of vulnerabilities which are not yet uh, patched so this is quite crucial in such cases but if we talk about uh, more traditional vector right like some kind of social engineering you may heard for example bad guys they even post on the underground forums they call for they, they hiring people in the companies so they throw a message there and say, look, you want to get five, ten thousand US dollar, just uh, take our USB stick, plug it into your working machine and your job is done. And someone may fall for that. Yeah. And then that's how bad guys get their way into the company and the systems. Oh, that's interesting. I thought this uh, USB trick is uh, a, a rather sort of old-fashioned trick and it has fell out of fashion and, you know. No, I think it's, it's still, working. Oh, it's, still it's still working. It's still working. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, okay. It's working. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I'm conscious of the time. So uh, let's just jump to the the theme, which is AI enable sort of cyber threats, of right? So a lot of that is going on, like you were also point out in your presentation, using it to... Uh, to code, right, uh, to, to craft very sophisticated phishing emails. Um, but in your report, you also pointed out uh, one um, time bandit. Uh, jailbreaking, yeah. Jailbreaking, jail, right, right, yeah. Jailbreaking, yeah. So this is perspective into how there should be more security around AI models in order to make sure that the safeguards are working. But this just proved that perhaps the safeguards can be circumvented. Exactly, exactly, yeah. I mean, that's tricky because from one side, AI is a great thing, right? I mean, we all enjoy generative AI. It can help you to write text, generate pictures, right? It changes uh, the life of a lot of people quite dramatically. You can have a chat with AI, like meaningful chat, right? To help to solve some of your problems mm -hmm. because it's just like huge database of knowledge, right? But at the same time, uh, when this AI was trained, they get a lot of data and they of course have some safeguards, but people will find a way to trick the AI into doing something which I shouldn't do, and this is yeah, that, that what we call now in industry jailbreaking. We, of course, closing this loophole since we learn about them and try to close it. But again, people are creative, so this Time Bandit is actually quite a nice example of that, right? But the guy, if I remember correctly, he just asked, I imagine that he is, we're in a situation like 100, 200 years ago. The malware is still not there, the computers are not there. And then by putting AI into this environment, he was able to trick it and to create it something else. And I believe that because bad guys are constantly doing that, they probably will find some other ways how to uh, penetrate the current uh, safety barriers which are inside. That is why, yes, as you said, it is very important for whole industry, I would say whole IT industry, right, should think how to make it more safe, right? And if we see that AI is used to uh, create malware or trick people into something, of course, we all need to collaborate and work together into building proper security boundaries. Yeah, uh, I think that there is a lot of uh, focus on how the threat actors are exploiting AI, but there's not so quite so much focus on how uh, we need to secure the AI development uh, cycle, right, end to end, in terms of uh, protecting the data that's used to train the AI, the algorithms, uh, you know, uh, put it, uh, ensuring that the safeguards work. Like in this case, uh, it doesn't quite. Right. Yeah, right. So, um, I think we can dive into this topic a lot more, but we need to maybe wrap up this podcast quite soon. So my last question really is about um, your threat. Uh, report about Singapore and about the region. What do you find quite interesting or st some interesting st statistics that you can share with our audience in terms of the findings about the country and the region? Yeah, well, I would say Singapore really stands out here because it's uh, first like a digital hub mm -hmm. of Asia. There are a lot of uh, companies working in the digital space here. As I mentioned during my presentation, there is also 
is very connected country, right? Very digital country. It's not an issue of internet access here, like in some neighboring countries, probably in some rural area. Here, everyone have very good access to the internet. And a lot of services, which is more important, presented online, right? Because in many countries, like a lot of services, still not that much online, right? But in Singapore, a lot of things digitized. And this make it an interesting, valuable target for bad guys, obviously, right? Plus, Singapore is also a financial hub. And this is, you see, is like perfect match for them. Easy to access digital information. At the same time, there is a lot of money here. And this is like definitely good for Singapore from in general, like growth business standpoint, right? But uh, bad in a way because we're a very attractive target for cyber criminals. That's why I would say we see this growth in the threats uh, specifically in Singapore and a bit of around as other countries start to adopt in these digital services as well, right? And that, that's kind of a thing we all need to pay close attention to. As I said, like, for example, uh, Singapore Cybersecurity Awareness Alliance uh, does a great job. Mm -hmm. And I also represent Acronis in this alliance, and we, the guys are really doing a very good job because we educating various uh, users from not only businesses, right, but end users and users with, uh, from various age groups, which is also important, right, because a lot of people, young and old, also now using internet in a variety of ways. Well, the, uh, the, com the chief executive of the Singap uh, Singapore's uh, cybersecurity agency, uh, Mr. David Cole, he likes to say that cybersecurity is a team sport and everyone has exactly. a part to play, right? Exactly. Exactly. So it's not just you <laughs> or myself, but it's also the kids, the, our parents, of everyone. Course. Yeah, it's yeah. a team sport. Um, so I, I'm so uh, glad that uh, you have the time to spare us, to give us a really quick glimpse into some of these uh, threats and trends that's been going on in the last year or so. And I'm very, very aware that we're just scratching the surface because we only touch a few themes like ransomware, job scams, AI, um, each of which deserve a long podcast on its that, own. That's <laughs> true. We can talk about any of these things for hours. Yeah, yeah. for hours. But uh, it's very, very uh, privileged to have your time today. So thank you, Alex, for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.